Hey y'all, Organizing Hire, welcome or welcome back. I share organization and productivity tips, tools, and resources. So be sure to subscribe if you're into stuff like that. I love using Todoist for my GTD implementation. It's a simple interface. There's not a lot of bells and whistles, but at the same time, it's powerful enough for me to get everything done. But if you're following GTD properly, there will come a time when your next actions list in Todoist is just overwhelming. When you have a list of 70 next actions, it's kind of hard to know where to start. What do you do when you just want to focus on your calls, you use filter. In this video, I'll explain why I use filters, give examples of filters that I'm currently using in my GTD setup, and some potential pitfalls that you might fall into that I just kind of learned through trial and error along the way. Just a heads up before I get too much into details, filters are a premium feature, so you do have to pay for that feature. If you wanna try to do a premium for two months, you can use the referral code that I will link in the description box below. If you end up upgrading to the premium version, then I will get two free months of Todoist at no additional cost to you. The thing I love the most about being able to use filters is I feel like it helps me to be even more productive than I would if I didn't use filters. So if I am laying on the couch, but I still wanna like do something, I can use my filters to really quickly have a list of like low energy, low brain stuff that I can do in like five minutes, like quick wins, and I still feel like I'm getting something done. This can actually be super clutch if you don't wanna break your karma streak. So I did this the other day. I didn't wanna break my streak, so I just quickly found some tasks that I could do. They were easy, low brain stuff that I could do, and I didn't break my streak. But more commonly what will happen is I will have like 10 or 15 minutes in between meetings, and I'll be looking for, okay, what's something that I can be doing? I can go to a film where I've already, because I've gone through all of the other four steps of the GTD process, when I'm ready to engage, I can very quickly feel confident in choosing from a list of you know four or five things, what thing I can do in the next 10 or 15 minutes to move a project forward. So if you're new to Todoist, you might not know how to create a custom filter. So I'm just very briefly gonna show you how to do a filter. In the web version, you would just go to the filter menu and click the plus button. Then there's a dialog box that pops up and you just put in the name of your filter, whatever you wanna call it, and then enter the query. So the query is like the characteristics that you want to search by or search for. There's tons of different queries you can enter. And if you click the question mark box, it'll take you to some examples that are straight from the Todoist website. So for my specific filters that I'm using for my GTD setup, um, they're all for next actions and errands. There's one specific one that I have that I pull out. You can create your own customized next actions filters list with these examples that I'm currently using. This is what my setup is. You can see that if you're using contexts like I do for tags, uh, I just put the context and then that next action tag and that's my calls list. I always put next action on the task because sometimes I have other tasks that are labeled as calls in Todoist, but those are blocked or those are waiting for, and I don't want those to show up here in my next actions tab. So like I said, using filters is awesome, but it can also become not awesome. So I wanna talk about some potential pitfalls and things that you wanna make sure that you avoid as you're using filters based on some trial and error that I've experienced myself. So the first one is to really try to only have as many filters as you need. You really don't want 70 filters. You could argue I don't need all of these filters here and some of these I could probably get rid of because I don't use them a ton, but you really only want to have as many filters as you need. You don't want 70 filters that's not making things easier for you. And keep in mind within each filter you can use the sort feature to break it down by due date or priority or by project as well. So you don't need to just have everything, you know, down to the minutia, only five minute calls related to this project that are due on Tuesday. You don't need a filter for that. That's too granular. Try to keep them somewhat broad. That's related to the second suggestion, which is to keep in mind, you can always just use the search function. The search function and the filter queries are pretty much the same thing. So if you're finding yourself constantly searching for something though in a particular query, that's when you probably just wanna make a filter for it because it'll save you some time. But if you search for something on a one-off and it's not really something that you look for regularly, don't make a filter for that. And the last tip is to put the filters that you use the most often in your favorites. I have have all of my next actions in my favorites so that way they are at the top and I don't have to go all the way to the bottom of the screen to look for them. You can make something a favorite just by clicking the menu to add it to favorites. 
And also just a pro tip, if the order that the filter is on the bottom here is the same order that it will be at the top. So you can't, once it's in your favorites area, you can't move it around to have it be alphabetically, which is what I usually like. But on the bottom where the filters actually are originated from, that's where you're able to kind of move where they are, where they show up, and they'll show up in that same order at the top. So that's how I'm using my filters with Todoist to help me really stay on top of my GTD workflow and get things done. Let me know if you're using filters in Todoist or what queries that you're using so we can share with each other. Thanks so much for watching and have a great week.